Friday, uh, on Sunday I said that, but we will not be having a fellowship meeting this Friday here. Uh, it, I, we moved it to the next Friday, and we're going to be, Brother William Persinger's having a revival in his church in Liberty, so we'll be ha- we'll be going to their church in Liberty, and uh, a brother that they've known, Brother Persinger's known a long time, said he'd be preaching, and he said, wonderful man, so uh, we're going to, uh, we'll be going to Brother William's church next Friday for fellowship meeting, not here this coming friday but the next friday will be there amen and um but if you amen we'll be going to philippians chapter 4 verse number 19 amen and I'm just i'm not sure how this will end up if i'm going to end up on a series out of this or amen just preaching this one message but however the lord will lead amen i may continue talking about uh, amen. Kind of going through some of these things that I briefly touch on tonight. Amen. Whatever the Lord would have. Amen. Philippians chapter number four, verse number nineteen. Amen. Amen. But my God shall supply all your need according to His rich uh, His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, if you'll turn with me to Second Timothy chapter number three. Verse number 1 through verse number 7. It may kind of seem weird, these verses together, but, hey amen, we're going to try to tie them together. And, hey amen, the Lord willing. Hey amen, Second uh, Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 1. This, this know also in the last days, the perilous time shall come. For men shall uh, be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, uh, despisers of, uh, of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away for uh, for, for this sort are uh, they uh, uh, they which creep into houses and led silly captives uh, uh, ca- uh, led captive silly women uh, laden and uh, with sin led away with divers lust ever learning uh, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth if you would just pray with me Lord I thank you for bringing us here Lord, I ask you to anoint me, Lord, for without your anointing, I can do nothing, God. But by that anointing, we know that all things are possible. I ask you to speak tonight as only you are able to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. We're going to we're gonna touch on... Amen. We're going to start talking about this. And I do feel, amen, I'll probably continue somewhat on this subject, amen, as we've been going through, amen, somewhat of the end times and, amen, and uh, enduring to the end and having what it takes to make it unto the end, amen, uh, just praying about this yesterday and seeking God, amen, and God just really dealt with me about this for the last several months, even before I I started preaching this, God was really dealing with me on this subject, amen, some months back, I don't remember, maybe, uh, maybe, Maybe all the way back in July, Amen. God, Amen. Maybe even before that, God dealing with me about Amen and during to the end. But Amen. But uh, we're, we're going to touch on tonight, Amen. And uh, but we're still just kind of continuing on the end times. And uh, I'm not really talking about when Jesus is coming, Amen. We don't, Amen. I do know Jesus is is coming, and I believe in the immediate coming of Christ. But I'm talking, Amen. Just uh, just uh, preparing us for the times it is to come. Amen. But amen. We're going to talk about the problem. Amen. And the remedy for the time. Amen. We do know. We do know that there is many problems of the time that we live in. We live in a time full of problems. I read to you in Second Timothy chapter three, verse number one through verse number seven. Amen. What? Amen. How this reflects the time that we live in now. Amen. You can see that we're living in perilous times. It says perilous times shall come. I do believe we are living in perilous times. Amen. It says for men shall be lovers of, themselves, of their own selves. Amen. There's, no, there's never been, I don't, not, not to my knowledge, there's never been a more selfish generation. Amen. Than there is
is today. Amen. Maybe the times of Noah. Amen. When God judged the earth and wiped all mankind out. Amen. But we live in this time that men are selfish. They're covetous. Amen. They want everything for themselves no matter what it takes to get it. Boasters. They're proud. They're blasphemers. What a blasphemous time that we truly live in. Disobedient to parents. How much rebellion in the children. Amen. Of this generation in the teenage years. Amen. If you don't believe how amen, this generation has is rebellious, go with me to the college campus tomorrow and you'll see the rebellion in young people today. Amen. You can go to a high school and be uh, just the same and rebellion. Unthankful. Unholy. Amen. Without natural affection. Amen. We live in a time that's without natural affection. This could be put towards homosexuality or in abortion as well. Amen. Both of them are without natural affection. It's unnatural for a man and a man to be together. It's unnatural for a mother to kill their child. But we live in a time where this is not only amen allowed, amen are tolerated, it is celebrated. Amen. We live in a wicked time. Amen. Truth breaker, uh, truth breakers, false accusers. Amen. Incontinent. Amen. Men that don't have any self control whatsoever. That's what incontinent is. Men have no self control whatsoever. Amen. What do they think? If it feels good, do it. Amen. We live in that time. Fearless. Amen. Despisers of the, of those that are good. Amen. What a time that we live in. Amen. Just showing you we live in this time. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Love of pleasures more than lovers of God. What an entertainment loving world we live in. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Everybody does these things and still says they're right standing with God. Amen. We live in a problem time. There is a problem in this generation. We live in a wicked, wicked hour. Amen. 1 John 5 and 19 says, And we know that we are God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Amen. How that reads even more so true today than ever. This whole world lies in wickedness. Amen. Psalms chapter 9, verse number 17. Amen. We've quoted it many times. And this is, I do believe, this has come the anthem, really, of America. The state of America. Amen. Really, this could be read in a state of a union address. Amen. And left alone as it is. Amen. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Amen. That's the state of America. It's been turned into hell because it forgot God. Amen. We live in a wicked generation. Amen. Amen. First of all, amen. The, the, problem, the problem is, amen, with this time, with this nation, is that we live. We're living in a godless nation. Amen. From, amen. From the highest up, amen, to the lowest down, it is godless. Amen. Uh, the government is godless. Amen. The people, most, the majority of the people are godless. Amen. The law, many laws are godless. Godless, amen. The ideas are godless. Hollywood's godless, amen. We live in a godless generation. Many people want to believe the biggest threat in America is, amen, a Democrat in office. Amen, sure. I don't want one of them God-hating Democrats in office no more than anybody else. Amen, I don't vote. Amen, just for the lesser of two evils. But amen, amen, they are wicked and vile. But that's not the biggest, amen, that's not the biggest threat to this nation. It is a godless nation that God will judge. God is the biggest threat to this nation that has forgotten Him. Amen. amen. We live in a nation that forgot God. How wicked. How, amen. How big of a threat this is. Because God's judgment and wrath will be poured out upon America. 
Amen. I'm just going over the problem right now. Amen. We do have a solution or a remedy for that problem. Amen. We all know what it is and we're just going to go over it. Amen. And Lord willing, we're probably going to go over it, amen, in greater detail later. Amen. We live in a godless nation. Amen. America. Amen. From the, amen. From the President of the United States. I don't believe the man is a Christian. Amen. I do appreciate some things he done. Didn't vote. I didn't vote for him. And don't plan on voting for him in the next election. Amen. He's a godless man. Amen. A wicked man. Amen. That needs to repent. Amen. I, I pray for him. I honor his authority, but I still can't uh, support. Amen. Wickedness. Amen. But I do. Amen. We live in a godless nation. Amen. The answer is not politics. Amen. We know that. Amen. We live in not only in a godless nation, but a godless world. Amen. Not only America is like Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. It's all over this world. Amen. It is living in such depravity, such wickedness. Amen. We live in a wicked generation. Amen. We live in a generation that is full of sin. The problem, amen, is sin. The problem with this world is that men love their sin and hate a holy God. Amen. That is the problem with this nation. Amen. The same man such sin as sodomy or homosexuality. Amen. Well, nothing more perverted, amen, and perverse than uh, the sin of homosexuality. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, they, they will flaunt it. They'll celebrate it. They're violent. They're wicked. Amen. What a wicked generation it is. You want to you want to see the depravity of the nation. Go to the Sodom event and tell them they need to repent. You're going to see how how wicked, how depraved, amen, this generation has truly come. Amen. What a wicked generation we live in that was celebrate perversion. Amen. Not only tolerated. Amen. Amen. John Wesley, I believe it was, said, Amen. What one generation tolerates, the other uh, generation will, uh, Amen, will, uh, will take in excess or something to that sort. But Amen. Amen. They'll, Amen. They're going to celebrate it. Amen. Amen. They're, amen. They're celebrating such wickedness. Go to a homosexual. Uh, homosexual event or just go on a college campus and say that all sodomites will go to hell except they repent. Amen. And you will see how amen almost everybody out there, even professing Christians would defend such a wicked, perverse sin. Amen. It's celebrated. Amen. Uh, amen. Such things. Amen. Such sins as abortion. Amen. Who would think that murder of an innocent baby would ever be, amen, even tolerated in this nation? Amen. I don't even know how it's tolerated. Even sinners would say that it's, amen, they don't know how it's even tolerated. Talking to a, 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 a sinner, amen, yesterday told me I don't even know how they even have a or can they even give an argument to abortion? I want to tell you there's not even a good argument to tolerate it. But they're not only tolerating abortion, they're celebrating abortion. Amen. You go to the abortion clinic with me. Amen. Not this coming Saturday, but the next. We will be, amen, we'll be going out to the abortion clinic in Houston. The, amen. The Houston's Women's Clinic. Amen. In Houston, we'll be going out there to preach. Amen. You'll see, amen, a group of people, amen, out there celebrating it. Saying how good it is. Amen. How much they love women. Amen. Because they believe in abortion. Amen. Amen. It's celebrated. Amen. You, amen. In the same, in the house, in the Senate. Amen. They have standing ovations. Amen. These states that are passing these wicked and vile abortion laws, they're giving standing ovations. They're cheering. They're clapping. They're hugging each other. Amen. Congratulating each other for the uh, killing of an innocent baby. Shows the wickedness of the time that we live in. 
Amen. Amen. Drugs. Amen. Drugs run rapid in America. Amen. It may be illegal, but amen, it's not hard for anyone to get. Amen. A drunkenness. Amen. Drunkenness. Amen. Just a liquid drug. Amen. That you drink. Amen. It's a drug that you drink. That's all. Amen. Legal drug that you can drink. Amen. It is. Amen. Celebrated. Look at it as normal. And you're looking at it as crazy. If you tell somebody you don't drink alcohol, or in my case, I've never touched it in my life. Hey Amen. You'll see, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be surprised at the crazy looks that I've had to say, I'm a 32 year old man that's never touched alcohol in my life. Amen. You would, you'd be, amen, you'd be shocked to see the looks. People say, really? I can't believe that. Amen. Some people say, you're missing out on all fun. Or they, uh, amen, during an open air conference, I went picked up about four bags of ice. Amen. So looks like, somebody said, it looks like you're going to have a good time. Amen. Or, you know, amen, you're going to pour it on a bunch of beer. I said, I've never even drunk alcohol in my life. She said, well, I don't know whether to congratulate you or feel sorry for me. I said, don't feel sorry for me because because no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. People think we're crazy for coming against such a wickedness. Amen. We live in a wicked time. We're sin. Amen. And the last one is here is rebellion. Amen. We're living in a time where rebellion, amen, is amen, tolerated and even celebrated. Amen. Hollywood's full of rebellion. Amen. Rebellion is cheered about, laughed about, looked at as funny. Amen. Amen. The rebellious one is always the cool kid. Amen. The rebellious one is always the one that gets cheered on at the college campus. Amen. Rebellion is a man running rapid. We live in a wicked, wicked generation. Amen. We need amen. This generation needs help. Amen. This generation needs something. Amen. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. We need one thing in this generation, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only answer for this time. He is the solution. He is the remedy. He is the only one that can fix this broke generation. Amen. The Lord Jesus is the only way. It's not by any man. Amen. If you're looking for a man to fix a problem, amen, you better beware because you're going to be accepting the Antichrist if you're not careful. No man can fix this problem. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can fix this problem. Amen. Not voting. Amen. Voting will not fix the problem. Amen. You can say, you can say well, if amen is the right person, just will just win this amen, win this race. This amen, this November. Amen. If the right person will just get the amen, win the race. Or no, 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 I think it's next November. Amen. The right person would win the race. Amen. We will have amen. We're amen. Then all be fixed. If Donald Trump can just get another time in office is everything's going to be good. That's not the case. Amen. No politician can fix this. Amen. No, amen. There's never been a politician that has been able to fix the depravity of this nation. Amen. And amen. And the worst state that we're in now is not going to fix it now. Amen. No matter how good they're doing, they're not going to fix the depravity of this nation. Amen. A better economy is not the answer for this nation. Everybody looks at this being the most important subject of everything a better economy amen was because their money is their god amen the economy is not going to fix this nation i even heard a woman say on it was months 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 back actually a couple years back during the election i think of donald trump saying and she said amen she said i i I get sick of hearing people talk about abortion amen there's bigger problems than abortion the economy is a bigger problem than abortion she said how wicked of a generation that we live in they would think amen your money is more important than a baby's life 
Amen. The answer is not to build a better economy. The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. The answer is not more laws. Man's just going to break them laws. Amen. I don't, I don't have a problem with laws. I do wish. Amen. I do trust God and pray. Amen. That they will abolish abortion. That homosexuality would be made illegal. Amen again. I do love, I would love to see such a thing. But that's not even the answer. The answer is that men's hearts be changed and live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But amen. Us as a church must take action to make Christ known. Amen. The amen. The answer is not the voting booth. The answer, amen, is us, the church, getting tired of the state that this world's in and willing to touch heaven about it, willing to do a work. What do we have? What we have, what do we have the offer, have to offer as a church? Amen. Is as Peter and John walked up to the gate beautiful, amen, after Pentecost, amen, has seen the lame man begging there, that his lame uh, they've been there for, amen, have been there for years and years, amen, has been lame from his mother's womb, they, he said, he looked up on them, amen, they looked up on him, he looked up on them, thinking to receive some money, but he, they said, silver and gold, and Peter said, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I to thee. That must be what the church is. Such as we have. We have nothing to give to you but the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to change this one, this world's laws. I'm not trying to change the political system of this world. I'm trying to change the hearts of man by the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the answer for this world. If you're looking for a man to fix the problem, amen, you're looking in the wrong direction. You're looking for laws to finish, uh, fix the problem. You're looking in the wrong direction. The problem will only be fixed by the one man, the Lord man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one. He is the answer. The answer, amen, amen, and I feel that we'll probably go over these, amen, in some, uh, some greater detail to fix the problem of this nation, amen, is repentance. As Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Amen. It is, it is, it is amen, vital that men, amen, that the church be what the church would be, that we be holy and that be set apart from this world. Amen. We're never going to reach anybody with having carnality in our hearts. Amen. amen. If we are carnal, amen, we're not right with God and we're going to be no help with anybody. I don't believe there's a such thing as a carnal Christian. Amen. For the carnal mind is enmity with God. Amen. There's no such thing as a lukewarm Christian. You must Give everything to God. Amen. If there's anything in our hearts, you cannot be helped in this generation with sin in your heart, with carnality, with worldliness in your heart. Amen. With lust in our heart. Amen. With amen, greed in our heart. With bitterness in our heart. Amen. We will never reach anybody with such a thing. Amen. Amen. Us as a church, it is our job to reflect and to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ that He may draw all men unto Him. Amen. But we're not going to do it if we have things in our heart that's not of Him. Amen. Prayer. Amen. Prayer is a, a, a very vital. Amen. Again, as the Second Chronicles seven fourteen told us, if we'll humble ourselves and pray, Amen, and seek His face and turn from our wicked ways, and we'll He'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. If His people would just pray, if His people would, Amen, put as much focus as this world, or more focus in this world, trying to fix it by the political system. Amen. Try to fix it with their amen uh, judge worrying over this political system. If we put that effort towards prayer. Amen. I've met a lot of people that puts lots of effort to uh, changing the political system of this world. Amen. If we put that much effort to seeking the face of God, what would the Lord Jesus do to Pentecostal Lighthouse? 
Amen. I mentioned the amen on the other night. Amen. If we be that fire on fire for God, we give our time over to prayer. What would the Lord do through us as a church? If we would just dedicate our lives to prayer. Amen. God would do great things as he did in the book of Acts for his saints. Amen. No people were no special breed of people. Amen. The apostles were no special breed of people. We don't believe that God makes some people saints, some people not. Amen. If you're living for God, you're obedient to God, you're in right standing with God, you are a saint. Amen. We're no longer sinners, but we're saints. Amen. So there was no special breed of people. They was just people that dedicated themselves to God and prayer unto Him. If we would just dedicate ourselves to seeking Him, we could do. Uh, we could see God do great things through this nation. Amen. What is the answer for all this? Amen. Uh, we'll get to more of it in a minute, but prayer is vital. Amen. The Word of God is vital. Amen. Matthew 4 and 4 says, But He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The answer is that the Word of the living God. Amen. That we would do dedicate ourselves to this word amen you want to know the answer to this time pick up the bible and read it you want to know the solution to every everything that we face the bible and the bible has it amen you want to know who to vote for read your bible amen you want to know where to go read your bible you want to know what you're to do for god in this time Read your Bible. He will tell you everything that you need to know in this Word. Amen. Amen. We, we need to dedicate ourselves in this time. The answer is found right here. Amen. Preaching is an amen and answer. Amen. The answer. Amen. Preaching is part of the answer that we preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He said it, uh, it says in 1 Corinthians 121 for that that it uh, uh, that in the wisdom of God the world knew uh, by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God to choose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It pleases God to use the preaching Preaching of the gospel to save them that believe. Preaching is still effective. Preaching is still vital. Amen. I want to tell you, amen. The, the answer is not the voting booth. The answer is the prayer closet, the word of God. Amen. Amen. In the preaching of God's word. It's my, amen. I want to do far more good for this nation in the prayer closet. Amen. Open it up God's word. And on the street corner that I'll ever do, amen, in the voting booth. Amen. I'm, I'm not going to see anything done by voting. Amen. I'm not going to see anything change in this nation. Has a politic ever proved to tell you the truth? Has a politic ever proved to, to fix sin in a nation? No. But I'm going to tell you, these things will fix it. If you'll just, amen, you'll, amen, amen. You might say, well, I'm not a preacher. But I'm going to tell you, you can do something for God. You can share this gospel. Be a witness. Everyone from the smallest is little Jubilee telling her three-year-old cousin about the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do it and she can do it. You can do it as well. Amen. amen. Anybody can share the Lord Jesus Christ with everyone that meet. The answer is that we make Christ known to a lost and dying world. Amen. I'm going to tell you, it's far more important for me to go on that college campus tomorrow. Amen. Step up on some uh, high elevation as I'm going to do. Put my sandwich board on. Pick up my Bible and pray. Amen. And lift up my voice. Amen. Where the whole can Amen. Everyone around me can hear me. Amen. And tell them, Jesus says, you must be born again. You need you accept you repent, you will perish. That is the answer for the time that we live in. Making Jesus Christ known through the preaching of the word. Amen.
Amen. Revival is necessary. Amen. I do believe we need to see revival. We're not going to see revival if we neglect the other three things we just went through. We're not going to see revival. Amen. Revival. Amen. Is of uh, God. Hearing our prayers as we read in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, Amen. It shows, Amen. It shows two of the three that we just went over. Amen. It shows prayer, and repentance, and prayer in this, Amen. And repentance, Amen. The holy holiness is required, Amen. Just as well as prayer is required, Amen. And it shows all throughout God's word, preaching is required. We need revival, Amen. Unity is, amen, vital if we're going to see anything done for God. And we're going to go over this in greater detail. Amen. Later, I believe. Amen. It's uh, Psalms 133 and 1. Amen. Have, uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. First uh, Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak all the same thing. Amen. And that there be no Visions among you, but uh, but that be uh, ye be perfect, joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Amen. Uh, Acts one, two and one, and they were all uh, and on the day Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Amen. Acts two uh, forty two through forty seven, and they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine, in fellowship, and breaking in bread and in prayers. And they feared uh, the, uh, and fear came upon every soul. And Many wonders and signs uh, uh, were done by the uh, by the apostles and uh, and all that believed the uh, were together and ha- and and ha- all and had all the uh, all things in common. All things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, and every man that and he and, and, and every man had need. And they uh, they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. Did, did they eat their meat in gladness and singleness of heart? Amen. In the singleness of their heart, they was amen. Shows they was in unity, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord. Asked Added to the church daily such as should be saved. Why? It's because people, amen, uh, uh, join together, uh, amen, with one goal, that the Lord Jesus be glorified. If we would just join together in such an attitude, amen, the Lord Jesus is going to be glorified. We're going to pray till heaven comes down. Amen. Every one of us had that attitude. We're going to get into prayer, baby, and we're going to pray till heaven comes down. Amen. We're going to join together. And we're going to, everyone that is well body, able to join together and go out and evangelize this world. If we would be in such an attitude as they was in the book of Acts, we could see revival. We could see soul saved. We could do a work for God and do a work in this nation. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if we're not, amen, we're not willing to do what it takes. We're never going to see it. Do we really have what it takes to make it? Amen. If we can't be in unity now, we can't pray now. Amen. In the depravity this nation's in. Amen. If we're going to buckle under pressure now, amen, what makes us think we're going to buckle, not going to buckle in the end? Amen. We must, amen. We must be bold. Amen. Boldness is going to be, is necessary. And it's going to be necessary even more. As though, amen, as things escalate worse and worse. Amen. There's a lot of verses I can go over and I'll go over them in a later time. But I'm going to tell you, in being on fire for God. Amen. We need that fire, that zeal. I'm going to tell you, you're never going to do anything for God by living a happy way life. Amen. I've already mentioned it some in, in talking about repentance, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a fire blazing within you if we're going to see God move. If we're going to 
do anything for God in the time that we live in. We're going to give this answer. Amen. Remedy or solution. Whatever you want to say it is. Amen. I'm going to tell you. Amen. We're going to have to get, be burning hot for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not going to pour out revival on a church that gives a half-hearted prayer. He's not going to pour out revival on a church. Amen. That amen. Really don't take this word of God seriously. He's not going to pour out revival on a church that's not willing to warn this world of the wrath that is to come. He's not going to pour out revival on a church that is not. Amen. Uh, amen. Not bold for him. Amen. He's not going to pour out revival on a church that is lukewarm. Amen. He's only going to pour out revival on them that is living on fire for him. That are blazing hot for him. I uh, tell you, I was th uh, just thinking about it today. Amen. I see signs of all over. Amen. Everywhere. Amen. And I, amen. I'm concerned. Amen. Even uh, each and every one of us in this church of letting the devil wear us down. Amen. And get us cold. Amen. Lord, help us not to grow cold. I'm going to tell you, amen, things are getting bad. People talk, amen, people talk something about us, it's going to get worse. People think bad of us, it's going to get worse. People call us a cult, it's going to get worse. Amen. Persecution's going to go far and far worse. Amen. If we can't stay on fire for God now, we will, amen. What makes us think we're going to be on fire for God? Amen. When our lives depend upon it. Amen. We need to be on fire for God. We have an answer. We must be willing to, amen, to be called to arms and to give this answer. Amen. And we're, amen. Lord willing, we'll be going over this, amen, more in greater detail later. Amen. Hopefully Sunday I can touch on this a little bit more. Amen. Well, amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Let's come in these altars and seek God. 